Right, so that's characterizing the different types of epithelia. And then there's classifying, which we're gonna talk about right here, right? That is, we're gonna look at epithelial tissue and we're gonna break it down into eight different types of epithelial tissue along with some of a few of their structural features that you're gonna be asked to identify, right? So this is the kind of thing you'll be doing uh, both just conceptually lecture-wise, but also uh, for histology purposes when you're trying to identify these epithelial tissue, right? And so here we're gonna classify the different types of epithelial. How do we classify them? What is the terminology? And what are some of the additional modifications, right? So the first thing you're gonna look at in classifying the different types of epithelial is to look at the shapes of the cells within that layer, right? And there's gonna come in three flavors right here, a flat, a cuboidal, or a columnar cell. Squamous, you could think of as squashed or squat. A squamous cell is a flattened cell right here, right? where the cell is, has very little sort of, it's very flat basically, it's very short, right? As opposed to a cuboidal cell, which is about as thick as it is long right here, which is opposed to a columnar cell, which is longer than it is thick right here. All right, so those are the three different basic shapes uh, that you're gonna classify at, right? And so here they are, another cartoon version of those, squamous and squat or squashed uh, cell, cuboidal or columnar, right? And these are all classified as simple, simple, simple because they're only a single layer, right? But they're based on the shape. Now, one thing I want to point out here is even though in these cartoons right here, you can see the shape of the overall cell right here is very square. That's very rectangle, right? And all these different sites right here. In an actual histology sample that you're going to be looking at, you won't often see the boundaries of the cell, right? All you're going to see is the nuclei, right, of those cells right here. And so you'll see these round cells right here. Those reflect the overall shape of the cell right here. Even if you can't see the entire cell, this is a simple cuboidal because of the shape of this nucleus. These cells right here are flattened nuclei. Those are simple squamous, even though you can't even see the rest of the cell at all right here. All right? So in any of these stains, what you, all the dark purple stuff, the stain that they use uh, stains the cell nuclei purple. It stains the rest of the cell kind of light pink. So you, this is what you're going to look for in these cells. Right? So you notice that the nuclei corresponds to the overall shape, right? Flattened, round, or oblong, just like similar to the shape. And keep in mind, when we're talking about these shapes, we're going to talk about the function of these different types of cells are going to relate to these shapes. So, for every simple columnar cell, you're going to have a cell that's stacked, I mean a cell tissue type that's stacked, and have a stratified columnar cell. So if you have more than one layer, it's called stratified. So if you have columnar, a simple columnar, one layer, you have a stratified columnar, more than one layer, right? And so it'll look something like this, a layer of cells with another layer of cells on top of them, right? Cuboidal, same thing, a simple cuboidal, you'll have a stratified cuboidal. Right? You have a simple squamous, then you're going to have a stratified squamous, more than one layer, right? So this is one, two, three, four, five, six types of cells, and they will three types of shapes combined with three types of layers, or two types of layers gives you six types of cells. All right, so, one important thing to note here. For these stratified cells, when you're classifying tissues, in other words, you're trying to identify it as something or another, you're gonna wanna look 
at the very top layer of that tissue right here, right? And when I say top layer, I mean at the free surface, this would be the outside of your body, for instance, or a lumen or a cavity or something, right? You're gonna look at that top layer and that's what you're gonna call that cell layer, right? So this right here, these are squamous cells. So this is a stratified squamous epithelia. Even though these cells down here look cuboidal, right? Because it just, that's just by convention, that's how they name these kind of cells, right? Because all the shells are a little bit different shape. So they just name it for whatever cell shape is at the top surface. So those are your six types of epithelial, either squamous, cuboidal, or stratified. Those could be simple or stratified. There's a third one, I mean a sixth, seventh one, called pseudostratified, which is actually a simple layer, but it, it looks kind of stratified. That is, all the uh, basal layers of the cells are attached to a cell membrane, but not all the nuclei are lined up like you see in this. And under a microscope, it looks more like this than this. We're going to talk a little bit more about pseudostratified, but that's the seventh, and we'll talk about the eighth in, in a couple minutes. Simple, right? The shape and layer gives you those six types. All right, so again, we're going to want to associate the shape, right, of the cell with its function. And for simple squamous epithelia, we're going to find those in your the sacs that line the inside of your lungs that rapidly exchange gas. We're gonna find them in blood vessels, in particular the capillaries, right, where stuff is going to be exchanged either through right through the cell membrane or maybe through in between the cells right here, right? So because you need to exchange stuff very rapidly usually, right, especially like blood cells, going through exchanging, uh, gas exchanging with your, with your lungs. You want that to happen very rapidly and you don't want a big area within your cell for it to travel through, right? So if the cell is flat, gas will go through these very quickly, right? So diffusion through the cell because most things are gonna have to pass through the cell membrane, but filtration meaning between the cells as well, right? So short distance is going to allow for rapid diffusion, right? And then the other sort of other function is that it's going to reduce friction uh, because it's a nice flat laminar surface for like smooth blood flow, like fluid moving through there is going to avoid turbulence, which is just what you want to do inside a blood vessel, right? So those are simple squamous cells. And so here's another cross section of a capillary within some tissue right here. These are the blood cells, these little red ones, these concave surface. These purple things are the nuclei of simple squamous cells that are making up this capillary, right? So again, you can't really see the rest of the cell, but they're all connected to each other. And this is a flat cell. So it's a simple squamous epithelia. Next simple cell is a simple cuboidal epithelia. These cells, as well as a simple columnar epithelia, are going to be associated with secretion and absorption. Right? So these cells might be lining your tubules of your kidney, which is producing filtrate for stuff you want to get rid of, like your urine, basically. And so secretion, what that means is that cells are going to take stuff from the outside, bring it into their cell body, and then put it into this tube right here for elimination, right? And then absorption means taking stuff that's in this tube, bringing it into the cell, and then bring it, putting it out into the body right here. That process is called absorption, right? So absorption is bringing stuff from these tubules, into the body, secretion is bringing stuff from the body into these tubes, but these cells right here are specialized for those functions. And when you have those functions, you require 
more cellular machinery to do it, so these cells are a lot bigger, right? They're not so worried about rapid diffusion. These are going to be more like active transport type mechanisms to move stuff across here, right there. So the bigger cell, as opposed to the simple squamous, is going to allow for that cell machinery. And we'll find these when we're looking at glandular tissue quite often, the things that make up the ducts. Again, secretion and absorption once again with simple columnar epithelia these cells can hold a lot of machinery uh, cellular machinery specialized for moving stuff in and out of the cell right here right in particular these simple columnar epithelia we're going to encounter these when we get to the digestive system right because they're going to be inv uh, involved in absorbing a lot of the nutrients that we digested in through the lining of these tubes right here, and then into the body right here, all right? So absorption is one of the major functions of the simple columnar. And so again, when you're trying to identify these types of cells, you're gonna look for that nuclei, that ablong nuclei, roughly in a row with each other right there. So secretion and absorption is really the main one here. And there's another thing as we'll talk about in a minute, simple columnar epithelia is always going to be associated in our class, in my class, with this fuzzy stuff on the apical surface, that is the free surface, it's going to have this fuzzy stuff on it. We'll talk about what that fuzzy stuff is. What I want to note right here is that when you look at any particular slice right here, hopefully there'll be a nice line of nuclei lined up. Right, and if the section is cut nice and clean, you're gonna have looks look something like this, right? When the cut is done at an even plane, perpendicular um, to these, you're gonna get a nice lining of nuclei. If there's some kind of oblong section by accident or just the way the section was, you're gonna have something that looks like this because you're gonna get a whole bunch of different cells at a whole different sections. So. When I show you a sample for testing purposes, then it's going to look as much like this as I could possibly find. But when you're looking through them, you may see stuff like this, but it's still simple columnar epithelia. Sometimes you're going to be looking something like this and you say, oh, that must be a stratified columnar or something because this top layer looks like an oblong layer. There's two reasons why it's not. Number one, I'm never going to ask you about that. Uh, if you see a stratified, it's only going to be stratified squamous. Number two, you're going to see these structures on top here, which I'll talk in a second. All right, so this is called pseudo stratified, pseudo meaning fake. So it looks kind of stratified, but every single one of these cells reach, even though if you can't see it or not, like this one doesn't look like it reaches, but it's just out of plane of the section. This one down here reaches it. This one over here reaches it. You can see every single cell here is connected to what's called a basal lamina. So it looks kind of stratified, but it is, is a pseudostratum. All right, and it's going to be specialized for secreting stuff. And the other main function here is it's going to be movement because what you see on top right here are called cilia. Right, and they're special. These are little structures which wave their little arms or whatever these are here. They move stuff across the surface of this right here. Right, and this is going to come into play when we study the respiratory system. This is where we're going to see these pseudostratified. Right, so here's an actual histology section. Right, these are the nuclei of the smaller ones, these are the nuclei here. And then these little, this hairy stuff on top is the cilia, right? So most of the time we're going to be calling these pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelia, right? The cilia is the modification of this pseudostratified columnar epithelia, right? So this brings us into our modification terminology, right? Uh, for simple cells, I have two modifications that come up. One of those, what we just talked about, ciliated, right? These uh, longer sort of projections. 
And then the other one is microvilli. We're not going to talk about stereocilia. Right? So microvilli is going to be associated with simple columnar epithelia, okay, for our class. There's, don't worry about what's happening in the real world. This is what, if you see microvilli, you're looking at simple columnar. If you see simple columnar, it's going to have microvilli on it in my class, right? So this is just looking closer and closer and closer at the individual cells. These bumps right here are the microvilli, right? And so what those microvilli do right here is provide an increase in surface area for more absorption, right? This is the inside of your digestive tract where you're trying to digest, uh, absorb rather, all the nutrients which you just digested through the epithelial lining. This goes as like one inch across, I'm just making up this number, one micron across or whatever, right? If you have all these different folds in here, you could increase that by like 50 fold, right? And increase your surface area a lot, right? So that's what the purpose of this microvilli is, to increase your surface area. And you'll notice again, along nuclei, right here, that's how you're gonna identify that. Okay, and for those modifications, uh, if you were looking at an electron scanning, scanning micrograph, the microvilli are very, very short projections coming off here. The cilia right here in purple are these really long structures right there. Right? And so in a real histology, these are from histology guide. Here's the pseudostratified with that sort of multi-layer looking cells right here. This fair, uh, stuff on top right here is the cilia. And it's a little more distinct than this fuzzy border that you see over here with the microvilli. So this is pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelia. This is a simple columnar epithelia. You see these nuclei kind of lined up together that has microvilli. And this, they often refer to this as a brush border because it just kind of looks like a fuzzy border. That we're going to talk about is a stratified squamous epithelia. Functionally, it's going to provide against abrasion, in particular on the surface of your skin, you have a thick layer of stratified squamous that protects you against things like rubbing up against you and sort of scraping or something like that. You want a thick layer that can be kind of sloughed off at that point, right? So you're gonna find stratified squamous. That's basically your dry stratified squamous on the outside layer of your body, making up your skin. And then as you move inside your body from that skin, like the inside of your mouth, or your nose, right? It's gonna turn wet. That is, it's gonna turn into a different type of stratified squamous, not worried about dehydration, right? Because it's inside your mouth, it's producing secretions, whereas on the surface, all that would be dehydrated. All right, so that's providing physical protection against protection, abrasion, pathogens, and chemicals. So those two types of stratified squamous epithelia or the other type of modification, right? We had ciliated, we had with microvilli, this is the other type, keratinized or non-keratinized stratified squamous. You can call these non-keratinized or wet or keratinized and dry. So these are the two types of stratified squamous. These are fine, basically your skin is the only place and then when you move inside your body at certain locations, it's a stratified squamous. Uh, looking very closely, right, this is a layer of your esophagus, which is a stratified squamous, non-keratinized. This is the outside of your skin right here, right? You can see the individual cells right over here, and you can see the dark purple dots here, which are the nuclei of those cells, right? In non-keratinized or wet, all the cells all the way to the top are living. They are living cells. 
they're doing things, they're interacting, and they're, they're alive, right? On your skin, that uppermost layer of that keratinized, stratified squamous epithelia, that top layer is dead, right? Those are dead cells. Everything you see when you look at somebody, you're looking at dead cells, right? So that top layer is dead. The nuclei, which is purple here, all you could see here is the space, the white things where the nuclei was because these dead cells are basically bags of protein. They don't have organelles. They don't have mitochondria. They don't have a nucleus. They're just serving this protective function for your skin, but they're not alive, All right? So that's how you tell the difference between non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelia versus keratinized stratified squamous epithelia. And that's one, this is a really nice sample. You can see it'll look like that. Or the, in the preparation, those that's, that dead cell layer often starts to flake off. So it looks something like this or like this, that top layer. And then the last thing I want to mention here is from here, this dead cell layer all the way down to here, these down here are live cells. This whole thing is keratinized stratified squamous epithelia even though these are the only cells which are actually keratinized, the whole thing is considered, if I ask you what tissue type this is, you say stratified squamous dry or stratified squamous keratinized. This is another sample of non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelia. This is like the front of your eyeball actually, your cornea. And these look cuboidal, these look flat so therefore it is stratified squamous right this also looks a little like stratified squamous but it isn't it's a what's called transitional epithelia this transitional epithelia stretches it has ability to stretch right so it is found in a, a couple of specific locations like your ureter and your bladder, right? In fact, that's the only places that will find it, right, in the urinary tract. And it allows an organ that's lined with this to stretch, that is distend, uh, without damaging that epithelial layer. But for this one though, this is transitional, and when your bladder is empty, it may look something like this, right? All the cells are kind of bunched up. When your bladder is full, it stretches out and all these cells on the surface are kind of stretched out. And for those, this is a histology sample right, of a pseudo stratified columnar epithelia with the cilia. And these are all the cells, right? This cell is embedded within that layer. This is called a goblet cell right here. What a goblet cell does is produce a bunch of mucin and secrete it out onto the surface right here so that this have a nice layer of mucus, which the cilia, cilia is going to kind of move along right here. Right? So this goblet cell is a different type of epithelial cell. It's a gland cell, and it's in fact a unicellular gland cell, but it's a gland cell. A gland cell is a type of epithelial cell that secretes stuff, right? So that's a goblet cell. Some of your tissue, like the tissue lining your stomach, is filled with a simple columnar cells that secrete a particular type of mucus onto your stomach lining. Right? That's what all this blue stuff is, right? So the whole sheet is secreting this mucus and lining your whole stomach with this layer of mucus. Sometimes you have these invagination of the cells, this group of cells that secrete stuff into this cavity right here, and then that stuff goes out onto the surface right here, right? So these groups of cells that are secreting stuff into ducts, right? Anything, any kind of cells that are secreting stuff, these specialized cells are gland cells right here, and glands, right, make up the organ right here. Right, so that's glandular tissue. So going backwards right here, here's an individual cartoon cell, right? That's making up some kind of stuff. Maybe it's mucin, 
maybe it's hormones like testosterone or estrogen or insulin or maybe digestive enzymes it's packaging them up into little vesicles those vesicles are fusing with the cell membrane and the contents are released outside the cell right here right that process is called exocytosis and that's how cells secrete stuff right so if you're a gland cell this is what you're doing in some form or another what does these glandular tissue have to do with epithelial so when you're a baby or not a baby a fetus right you're covered in these simple lining right here and then those cells will maybe grow grow layers uh, into stratified squamous maybe they'll change shapes become a simple columnar or a cuboidal or whatever right that'll what will happen during development another option is that instead of those cells growing upward they're going to grow downward into the tissue right here right and so if cells are growing into the underlying connective tissue they may become gland cells okay so sometimes they grow in they form a structure right of glandular secreting cells the cells that were connecting them to the surface are going to die off for some reason leaving a clump of tissue right a clump of glandular tissue inside the body even though it originally came from this layer right here when these cells secrete stuff, right, they're going to secrete it into blood vessels or maybe the surrounding tissue right here. When it does something like that, when you have no connection to the surface and it's secreting it into the bloodstream, this type of glandular epithelium is called an endocrine gland. Right, so here's that group of cells. They're making stuff, again, testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, insulin, uh, adrenaline, right? They're made by these glands, adrenaline glands, ovaries. I mean, uh, certain types of cells in the ovaries are gonna secrete stuff into blood vessels and it's gonna go right into your bloodstream, right? And go around to the body. That's called endocrine glands. They're not connected to your surface. They're really associated with blood vessels. Here's another type of gland, right? Sometimes those cells grow down, they form their glandular tissue, but the cells that were connected to the cell membrane remain there. And that remaining cells form what's called a duct. Right? So you have a connection in between the cells that are secreting stuff and the outside world right here. Right? So these are called exocrine glands. Right? And these cells make stuff. This glandular epithelium, which arose from there, right, are going to make stuff. And, and that stuff is going to go out these ducts out onto the surface right here. Right? Oops. So in your mouth, for instance, right, you're, as I said, you have a wet uh, stratified squamous like this. You have saliva glands right, that have pores that are opening up onto the surface of your mouth that is, you know, that saliva has come out and coating your mouth, making sure you don't have like dry mouth and stuff, right? All right, so those are exocrine glands. And there's three types of glands here that you have to know about exocrine glands, and then we're finished, okay? These three types, of exocrine glands are americrine, apocrine, and holocrine, and they just have to do with the method of secretion. When I talked about that exocytosis, that is the cell is making stuff in the body, likes uh, different uh, forms of digestive enzymes and saliva are being packaged into these little vesicles. Those vesicles float up fuse with the cell membrane and the contents are released and the whole cell remains intact right this is called merocrine secretion and it's normal exocytosis another type a second type of cell right here of secretion is called apocrine secretion this is where a part of the cell the apical surface ap 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 right apocrine 
apart, that's how you're going to remember that, is pinched off, right? So the product is being made just like here. It floats up to the apical surface, that is the top surface, and the whole cell, not the whole cell, rather the part of the cell, is pinched off and released into those ducts, right? This is why the only example we'll see in this is the mammary glands, right, which produce milk and is secreted out, you know, out into the surface here. This is why milk is very fatty. This right here is part of the cell membrane. It's phospholipid bilayer. There's a lot of extra fat in milk, okay, a part of the cell. And then the cell just regrows itself, right? The last type of cell is where cell product is made, right, within the cell right here that it wants to secrete. In this case, maybe your sebaceous glands, like the oily surface of your, uh, your forehead and the top of your head and your nose when you're a teenager, right, is making a lot of oily products, right, to keep your skin uh, lubricated, right? These are sebaceous glands. It's making the products at a certain point, the entire cell lyses, that is, just disintegrates into those ducts and the whole cell and its contents are released out onto the surface of your skin, right? So during puberty, right, your sebaceous glands are going crazy and your skin is very oily. That's why the skin is oily there because the whole cell with all its cell membrane is being secreted out onto the surface. Right. These cells, once they're lice, are continuously replaced. One thing, as you watch the next video, or the previous video, really, you'll see that um, cells are continuing, epithelial cells are continuously replacing themselves. All right. So those are the three types of cells. You'll remember the names. A part of the cell, apocrine, or the apical surface, apocrine. Holocrine, the whole cell, being pinched off and released, holocrine secretion. All right, so those are your exocrine glands. And if you are looking at any type of tissue sample and you're trying to identify glands, you may see complex structures in there. I won't ask you about any of these, like what is this, what is this? Just know that you'll never, hardly ever see any of these whole structures. You're only in a section of that.